following video will be concerning itself with firearms, their design, and attempts to reverse engineer or research how some of these were made. Today we'll be covering the Cobra Six Shot Handgun Derringer. Now this is a really weird bird because it looks like it's really just a 12 gauge shotgun pistol with the chamber altered so you can't really fire anything. And an insert for a six shot 22 caliber revolver stuck in it as a 22 caliber revolver insert for a standard 12 gauge. Now the idea here is that I'm experimenting with the idea of can this be checked to see if it was really that or what happened. Now. Without having possession of the item, reverse engineering it from pictures is stupid, but let's continue. In this screen you're seeing right now, you'll see some basic information. I'm going to be using, as an example, the material to make a 22 caliber barrel, that's with rifling and stuff, or making a pepper box, which is a revolver where it's literally barrels with rifling and chambers, and you fire bullets through it. That's pretty close to the design that was used. And I'm using barrel liners because they are made to the standard for the industry and are used for repairing older 22 caliber rifles. And they're also used with a type of twist rate, one rotation in 16 inches or 20 inches or 9 or 8 or whatever inches that match up with the performance requirement you know, generically for long rifle or shorts or 22 magnums. Now, on here you'll have the Wikipedia data, and this is the Wikipedia version of things, so please bear with me. 22 Magnum and 22 Long Rifle and Short all have characteristics that are very similar but not identical. 223 versus 222 for the groove, uh, 218 versus 219 for the bore diameter. Uh, the bullets themselves are almost identical. Uh, the cartridge dimensions are different, so you have to drill a different chamber, but the twist rate is usually 1 in 16. One rotation in 16 inches. Now, a longer barrel improves these things and that sort of thing, but in pistols and rifles, they tend to use the same rotation rates. Now, when it comes to 223.556, aka the AR-15s and other rifles that use the larger cartridges, they have bullets that are very similar size too, and they use a twist rate in one, in, one rotation in one foot or one rotation in like eight inches or whatever. Now, the barrel liner material I'm using for example today comes in 25 inch lengths in quotes. They're actually 26 inches and above, which means that you could use this to make a firearm that would, under no circumstances from that material, ever be declared a short barreled anything. But obviously they can be chopped up and used to make lots of different barrels for pistols, as repair items, to repair a gun that would otherwise be dangerous. The material has an outer diameter being 4140 steel derived barrels, they are rifled by the way, of quote unquote five sixteenths of an inch outer diameter or almost eight millimeters or almost three you know point three one inches outer diameter. I'm taking it as axiomatic that they measured it accurately, but that isn't necessarily true. And it won't be relevant because we're just going to do this as the bare minimum of data. And again it shows the groove depth and that sort of thing in there. So I can use that to confirm it's two two three, which is the larger of the groove diameters. So we're good. Now we're going to go to the diagrams in a minute, but those are Brunel or Redmond barrel liners that are over two feet long and cost about 40 bucks. So that works out to some interesting statistics and math on the subject. Now let's move on to the object at hand. This is the Cobra, um, we'll call it a revolver, and as you can see from the number of holes, it is a, a, a manually turned cylinder that fires six shots, 22 long rifle. And as you can see, um, it was put on basically a flare gun body. This body is universal between every blasted gun they put out just about. Uh, the only difference being this metal plate. And I've designed a version of this that I'm going to be releasing information about that uses a block plate and a screw so you can change this to any of them. Just saying. Anyway, the universal lower receiver being ignored here, what we end up with here is what looks like suspiciously like a 12 gauge shotgun barrel but because of this really thick rim, we're going to call it, with a knurled edge so it could rotate, this would not qualify as being able to quote-unquote chamber a shotgun shell, even though obviously someone would have tried to do it like a dumbass. But let's continue. When it's pulled out and flipped over, you can see the spacing on this. Now I'm going to back it up again. Observe the spacing. Now you may have noticed they are actually parallel to each other. These are not angled in. There is a cheat version of this. There was two versions. 
it would put out, even though this obviously has the firing pin on top, it would end up shooting down. It was a poor quality knockoff done by another company. Now that implies that there's enough space in there that that can fit into that space. And yes, that could be a 12 gauge shotgun shell derived dimension set. So I'm going to do the experiment on screen. First we start off with the Brunel or whatever company made, they're all the same, um, barrel liners. Land and groove is, in this case, I'm using a full extreme range. Land, 0.218, groove, 223. I'm using the outer diameter as 0.311, outer diameter, and I'm doing the long rifle rim diameter as this color, and this is the magnum. Obviously, if you're using magnums with a bigger rim diameter, um, it would be harder to have the cartridge fit in a crammed in space for six shots, but we're going to do the experiment here with long rifle because it's smaller to see if we can do a go, no go test. Now at this point, drawn over the top of this is the total diameter for the metal with pieces cut out to get these as close together as possible with 22 long rifles touching rims. We end up with an outer diameter for the entire mass of 886. If some of you out there already had your ears tingle, that's the outer diameter for a rim of a shotgun shell. Okay. The bore diameter is 0.729 or 0.73 or 73 calibers here. And 0.799 or 0.8 inches is the chamber diameter. Now, as you can see from this drawing, we end up with our cartridges, the 22 long rifles, if we did a six shot, requiring a space of 0.778 for the bore diameter for your gun. Obviously, you cannot put that into a 12-gauge shotgun and safely fire a damn thing. It wouldn't work because it would be running into, every one of them would be skittering off of the forcing cone, bouncing down the barrel, and doing you no good. But we do see that it would fit into a chamber so and also have a rim diameter here represented. So if you welded them together or sintered them into, uh, I don't know, tinning flux and solder, you could make yourself a cartridge that would fit into, well, not a shotgun barrel that wouldn't shoot through it, but you could make something a six shot that would fire through something that wouldn't normally be considered a 12 gauge. It would have to have an overboard diameter. Now let's go look at that item again. That barrel here could have easily been 12 gauge chambered here. Obviously it's moved forward so you can't really put a shell in it. And this could be so big that nobody would ever want to fire a shell through it. So it's possible that was literally arranged this way. But that means that that opening at the end, instead of being 77, it's almost 78 caliber. So basically, it's a straight pipe. And yeah, when they made that pistol, they made sure that there was something in the way so you couldn't actually fire a shotgun shell. But the point is, that is probably how they did it to keep them parallel if that was flare gun sized. Again, it could have been that they wanted to make a metal flare gun, found out they couldn't do it, chopped it, and stuck this adapter in. But let's look at the practicality of making one that's 22 long rifle that would work in a real shotgun. Again, this is 22 long rifle six shot. Let's try five shots instead. Well, suddenly everything changes. The outer diameter here is the shotgun shell itself. You could actually cram five barrels into there. You'd have to cut these spaces out here where they cross up. You'd have to cut each of them at a funny angle. It'd be a pain in the ass, but yes, you could fit them inside of, not just toward the rims work, you could fit them inside of the space, inside of a shotgun shell space. This would easily work. And a five shot as an adapter that you could rotate and fire shots through or have in the center of it a firing pin impact point that would fire them in sequence somehow. Yes, you could absolutely make an adapter that would fire a five shot array of 22 long rifle only through a standard shotgun. That's if it's using true 12 gauge, which is almost 73 caliber. If it was smaller than that by a certain amount, it might be able to work, but I really wouldn't want to chance it. That means you wouldn't really be able to do this with every single gun. If you try to do 22 Magnums, it would barely work. But again, if you were using a gun made out of a steel pipe uh, instead of a real shotgun, like, you know, I would do steel pipe, this would work and you could still build this. And more importantly, this could be an adaption you could stick onto of the body of a standard shotgun that would allow you to have a reasonably small cylinder and be able to fire 22 caliber long rifle out of your body. You'd take off the barrel and the fore end and put on an adaption and put a pistol on it. You'd have to start off with a quote unquote firearm. That's a 12 gauge without a buttstock. But could you do a six shot? Absolutely. But you could not have the 12 gauge barrel there. 
Now, in the United States, making a subcaliber adapter like this is perfectly legal, sellable, and marketable. This is something that people might want. So here's the proposal. Yes, I'm designing it. An impact point, by the way, it's almost the same size as a pellet gun pellet diameter, where it would hit by being hit by the firing pin. And in this would be some sort of mechanism that would ratchet around and hit the edges of each of the uh, rim fire points to set off each car cartridge one at a time. It would be doable. You wouldn't be able to trust it until you finished emptying them or cracked it open. It would be breech loader only. You know, a break action. But you could make a five shot revolver insert for a 12 gauge shotgun barrel for a 22 long rifle. And if you're willing to use an overbore barrel, or if you knew it was, like a Mossberg might be overbore, or just to or just make it to where you make a revolver like this. You could easily fit this in the same space right there to be able to fire 22 magnums as well. Five shot only. My presumption at one time that you could do this through any shotgun, it was probably wrong as far as six shot. I had a video like that. I will probably put a link to this video up as an addendum. Moving on. Um, Brownell's Redmond Barrel Liners, I'll have a link below in the description that goes to an archive of it, for example, only. Uh, the economics of this shows that under $5 you can make eight of these barrels out of a single 24, 26, or 25 inch long piece. That means you can make them the same size, shape, and chambering as a 12 gauge shell. So you could stick five barrels in and they would be fully rifled and legal and you could use them in an emergency situation where you could pull the trigger five times on a break action and have it go off. As for the mechanism that would ratchet around and firing cartridges, I'm not sure how to do it, but I'm going to be working on that next. But if you wanted to know all of this to build a legit revolver, you now have some dimension data. So, um, pretty much that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And again, I'm not marketing this company. I'm just using them as an example because they published the data on how big or small these uh, barrels are. And I needed that data for a starting point. And yeah, it's plausible and doable. As for whether or not Cobra did it that way, the other method would be to have the cartridges tilt inward and fire in various directions. And that was not reported as happening. So I'm pretty sure that they made themselves a overbore 12 gauge barrel, chopped off the back so it wouldn't be a violation of the law, and then put the cylinder in it because they wanted to market it. I'm pretty sure they also probably were planning on making a fully metal version of the barrel for firing flares. It's actually the flare gun barrel, it's just got the butt chopped off. They made it out of plastic normally. That was the metal version and they decided to not try to push the ATF over the edge. Thanks for watching, have a good day, good luck with that, and I hope that this was useful to some of you watching.